can move the price of your place from like $150 to $600 in one evening by just, or, you know, for two or three days, you know, we got, we got the world cup coming up. So, you know, this is going to be, I think we have four, three or four games. That's like having three or four Super Bowls. And if you don't. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Yusuf here with Refresh Co. And today we have one of our special customers, Mr. Jason. We're going to be talking to Mr. Jason today um, about his unit. We met Mr. Jason almost a year ago. And just a, a little bit about who he is. I like to consider him a teacher of teachers. That's how he explained it. What he does, he teaches teachers. But he's also um, a father, real estate investor, and overall just a pretty cool guy. Um, since we met him, he's taught me a lot. Even I tried to start my unit and he gave me some pointers. And the pointers he gave me, my unit was booked the half for the first half of the month when I started it until I got shut down by my apartment building. But the information that he gave me, I, I listened to it and it actually worked. So we're going to talk to Mr. Jason, learn about his um, short-term rental Airbnb business, and we're going to go from there. So let's welcome Mr. Jason. Yay! Yeah, it's going to be some clapping. But <laughs> all right, Mr. Jason. So again, thank you for being here. So sure. I want you to just, you know, talk a little bit more about you, talk about your Airbnb business, why you got into it, and your outlooks on um, the industry, how you run things, just yeah. Explain to people a little bit about who you are. Sure. Um, so my name is Jason and um, thanks again for having me. Uh, Yusuf. And uh, this, in, in short, I'm, I am, uh, I'm a dad. Uh, I am a teacher, but I teach teachers. Uh, so I'm uh, like, I, uh, my goal is to get schools, help them with their STEM endeavors, we'd say it. So science, technology, engineering, and math is, is my gig. Um, and uh, when I'm not helping with uh, helping schools with uh, STEM education, um, I do have an Airbnb and uh, short term rental, we'll say. And so my um, my I think you asked kind of like what my philosophy on it is, um, you know, my my biggest philosophy with with any short term rental or I guess realistic, you could do this with mid and long. But um, is that. Uh, you can win with an with an imperfect home. You know what I mean. Uh, my my place is I have a place in Decatur, and it's a three bedroom, two bath, uh, and it, it ain't perfect, but uh, it is. It has the things I think that um, that guests want. Um, it it better be clean, um, and that's kind of where Refreshco comes in. Um, in addition to that, it's you need to have some customer service, honestly. Like if I were to say like the two things that make us stand out is that um, I believe a lot of short-term rental folks feel like they can set it and forget it. They, uh, they you know, they stage it once and then um, and they put it on the platform and it can be Airbnb or VRBO, it could be anything. Um, and, uh, and then they think the money should just roll in. But realistically, they, sh they should have the mindset that, all right, now the problems roll in. And so if you don't want that, if you, if you, if you don't, if you think about that, that's why I think it's funny to think about myself as a real estate investor. I think I'm more in hospitality than anything. Um, if you don't have a, if you don't have a, a hospitality mindset or at least a, 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 a heart of hospitality, um, this is a rough, this is a rough gig. But if you do, then it's, it's easy. If, if helping is hard for you, then it's it's challenging, but if it's easy to help, um, you will have tons of opportunities to help. People will call you. They don't know how to get into places. They can, you know, super basic stuff. They don't know how to turn TVs on. Um, if that, if you're okay with helping them that way, um, I think that's the first thing. And the second thing is you have to be not so. Yeah, you have to be. You have to think about your pricing, and you have to think about the fact that um, this is a business, and and you want to make, you know, you want to make as much money as possible, but you want to make it as efficiently as possible. And so um, I guess we can talk about pricing stuff later, but my, my, my pricing model is, is basically like, I don't need to be the most expensive thing on, on the block. Um, and I don't have a problem with being the cheapest thing on the block and that doesn't affect my quality at all. So um, that's just good old pricing strategy. So that's just the gist of it. Nice. 
So yeah, guys. So his unit is over in Decatur, and I mean, I think the unit is fine. But he, when we first talked, he did say, you know, like it's not the cutest thing on the block. But the craziest thing is that his unit is always booked. There was one month where I swear we cleaned there twenty twenty times, and I'm like, Mister Jason, what did you do to get your unit booked twenty? Like we cleaned here. so much this month what did you do mr jason just talk about i think that was was it maybe it was march middle of Yeah, march yeah, it was it, cracking. we were there like at least every other day i don't know what Yeah. he did it was booming talk about that <laughs> yeah, that month was cracking. Um, we, uh, you know, again, first things first is, you know, if you're a newbie, you know, if you're a newbie, get, get super hosted. Like, like that's your, that's, you know, or, 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 or manage, your opening month when most of the platforms will optimize you. So you get your system up, you know, you get your, get your place up, um, overdo it, you know, mints and, you know, Coke and water in the fridge and uh, coffee and decaf and tea and, you know, do those things that allow for a person to go, you look, you know what, this wasn't that bad. Um, you know, you know, like, you know, regardless of the location, I'm I'm pleasantly surprised that they that you know this place is this clean or you know white sheets white on white on white I I swear by that like you know not dark colored anything like you know and so th you know, that's the initial part so do a good job for a period of time and if you're up, if you're if you're able to keep a four point eight or higher then you will get a super host status we'll say that's that's super important because that optimizes you. The second thing about that is move your pricing around. And so if it is like for some reason, March was rolling, but March booked before March happened. And so we would have, you know, the weekends booked, but Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday were not booked. And so, you know, you have to make a decision if your place is $150 a night um, on the weekends, on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, if it's a gap, like look at it in advance and drop your price. I mean, drop it, drop it. Because I would rather have, you know, 30 days booked, you know, let's say oh, 25, 26 days out of 30 days booked Mm -hmm. with an average of, you know, lower than my top price than to have these big windows, you know what I mean? Like these big, you know, gaps. And so um, I think that's the first step. Some folks can figure out how to get rid of the big gaps. And that's like, that's like level two. I would say like the level three, is like getting rid of like even single days. So that's tough. Like you got to, sometimes people call it an orphan day where um, if your place is booked through Sunday, um, Monday could be an orphan day on one side or Thursday could be an orphan day on the other side. And, um, and you have to gouge on that one. Like this is what the airlines do. Like, if, if, you know, you, the reason why you can fly, you know, Atlanta to Chicago for $62 Is because Delta would rather fly that thing with someone sixty two bucks and the person right beside you is flying for two twenty five Mm -hmm. than to have that seat sit empty. And so I think if if Airbnb or short term rental folks can get that mindset, um, it's called dynamic pricing. You could see all kinds of um, there's a lot of free stuff too. By the way, there's a lot of coaches that are paying for stuff, but there's a ton of free, really good information that's out there available. But if you can understand dynamic pricing at all. you'll, you'll win. And I'm in a competitive zip code. Like I'm down the street from like Kirkwood and like, you know, there's PGA tournament is down, you know, like there's some really how there's some houses that are nicer than not than mine. And I can get on air DNA and other stats and realize that, you know, my occupancy is killing theirs. Um, and one of the reasons why is just because I price better than they do. Mm -hmm. mm. okay that's good this is really good i'm taking notes too by the way just soaking up information okay well, let's switch over to talk a little bit more about the operations and that nature so Before you were working with us, um, what were your systems, your routine with the property, making sure it was ready to go for the next guest when it comes to cleanliness, things like that? How how were things before working with us? Uh, it was, um, it was challenging because I got a full-time job and I think a lot of folks have full-time jobs that are doing this and there's, I think it's a, okay. It's two levels. So one, do it. It's going to be challenging, but do it. Cause when you do it, you clean it yourself and you, you are the operation, which means there's probably nothing written down cause it's all in your head. Um, you get good at 
your house. You know what the spots are that are doing this. You know how your bathroom is. You know whether or not you got the best set of beds or, you know, so try it out yourself. Uh, it's hard to maintain it, though, if you want to scale at all. And then that's not just scaling, having more units. I'm just talking about scaling the rest of your life. My life scaled by having kids. My life scaled by my job, my my full time job picked up dramatically. And so I found myself in a spot where it's like, OK, you know, I can do this. I got super hosted on my on my own, um, but I couldn't maintain it. And I think a lot of folks, that's just sprinting. You know what I mean? Like you're real good for 100 meters, but keep that pace up and run that whole lap and see what happens. And so that's where I, I found myself really slowing down and um, and I needed some help. And so I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to do it on my own. And I also didn't want like a, no shots at mom and pops, but I didn't want like a, I didn't want someone who would flake on me. Like I don't, I, I can't have one person who, if they get sick, it's a wrap. And so that's how I kind of found, found you also. My my opening stages was doing it myself, and then right now I'm at I'm at with the refresh code system. But my systems were me and some comet <laughs> and, some, mm-hmm. and some bleach. That was the system. Okay. Um. You made a, I think you made a good point. I just want to touch on that. Um. Not only when you say scale, a lot of people think scale, which I think now is a buzz word, a buzz term. Sure. But not only just scaling your business, but scaling your life. Because yeah. running a very operations heavy business, running a cleaning company, running a short term rental unit, anything where it requires people, people doing something, that is going to be hard to scale. But not even about the business. Let's talk about life. You say you. I remember while we were working with you, you had babies. Yeah. You, you said you things picked up at work during the school yeah. year, and that's something a lot of people don't talk about. So it was not even about I can't handle this unit. I can't even, I need to handle my life. That's super important, right. especially as a right. business owner. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that 100%. So scale is super buzzy to the point where some people say scale completely wrong, but um, I'm glad you caught that. I, I would say, I'd say that, you know, it's tough to find balance. I do think balance is a little bit overrated if you're ambitious. Oh. Um, but my wife would probably disagree with me there, but um it, at some point you got to come up with a team and um and I did not want to make a team and there's a, there's a whole bunch of there's literature and there's trainings on that as well where you basically train your own cleaners and who had, like I just uh, that doesn't work in my world so the easiest way that you can scale fast is to buy somebody else's expertise mm. and that's what I did. So the way, you know, you, you, you can buy time, you can buy, you can buy a lot of things, but um, it, it's, it's super valuable to buy expertise by putting together a team in that actually does the stuff that you don't want to do. And they want to do it, which is, the, which is one of the reasons why I dig you guys. It's like, I don't want to clean. I can clean and I'm not bad at it, but I really do want a team that's passionate about cleaning which is weird to me, honestly, like that's, that's your, that's your thing. You, I've, I'm in, I'm in the house right now and it looks great. And it looks like somebody cared and that's what you want. And you want to pay for that. You want to pay for someone who, you know, really wants to do the thing that if you don't want to do that book, I was talking to you about who, not how by Dan Sullivan's great book that talks about the who. So you are my who refresh goes my who. Yeah. Um, and, um, and I don't worry about the how at all. Mm, that's good. So when you initially came across our company, what spoke to you about us that, you know, gave you the heart and the inkling to say, Let, let's give them a chance with my unit? Um, I came across you on YouTube and I came across you with something like this. To tell you, this is funny that I'm actually doing this with you right now. I came across you. I looked, I Googled, I YouTubed. So I'm old. And so I use Google, right? And I know mm-hmm. that kids use everything else. Now, I think TikTok is like the number one search engine. So, but I also know that YouTube is the number two search engine in, in the world. You know what I mean? But I was like, I've never, I've never searched YouTube for a cleaner. And I typed in cleaners Atlanta and you guys popped up and you put, popped up with content. And I am a, I'm a consumer of content. And so I was like, oh, this is cool. And then you actually had like, you know, testimonials. And I remember you had a testimonial. I think it was a fella who was in Florida and uh, had, a, you know, had to 
again, his life shifted and he, he needed to find a team that could manage his properties the way that he would, you know what I mean? Like literally, like, and I'm saying that all the time, like folding the sheets the way that I would, you know, putting out the mints the way that I would, like that kind of energy is what I got from that interview. And I was like, oh, sweet. And then um, I think you were on the news or WSB or something like that. And I was like, okay, he's making moves. Um, it didn't hurt that you were like more house and, you know, like your backstory was great. And so that's kind of how I, how I linked up with you. But I mean, that's a testament for a bunch of young business folks too, that you picked a different media, like no joke. Like I didn't find you online. I mean, I found you online, but I didn't find you like on Thumbtack or something like that. Like I literally found you on YouTube, mm -hmm. like right next yeah. to like, you know, you were there and like a Cardi B video was right there. You know what I mean? But <laughs> I, like, that's, that's pretty cool that you could, you know, like, man, I am literally right next. The algorithm put me right next to, you know, a CNN article. You know what I mean? So that was, that was smart of you to do that. So you keep that up. Okay. Now it's been about a full year, Mr. Jason, um, full year working, working over at Glenwood. What would you say things have changed for your life, for your unit? Talk about that, like the after working with us. It's been a full yep. year now, almost. Yeah. It's weird. It's been a year, man. Like, uh, it, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a year. It's funny. I'm in here right now. It's been a growing thing. Like you, you guys, so it's been a year. My life has been up and down. I've had uh, I've had births. I have a, a, a six month old son, and I've had you know people in my family pass away, and it's 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 been really eye opening to see how much the system that we have. I'd say you know like fresh go on uh, holding down the house when I know that I couldn't do it. So the biggest thing that's changed is I was super hands-on, 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 because I was washing everything. I was doing, doing it. And then even like early on, you know, I was checking on you a little bit to make sure, yeah, you know, even that, like, yeah, I, I still could do better with giving you a little bit of like some of my standard operating procedures, but I just was like, who, not how, like, I don't, don't, I trust your system. I trust how you're cleaning. I don't need to come up with a way for you, which is my own, personality fight you know what i mean where it's like mm -hmm. let leave them alone like if you're gonna pay someone to do it let them do it yeah. that's a big shift and that has paid off in spades in the last three months when my world kind of went real crazy and so um right now i would say that you know like that it was it's eye-opening i think that's kind of how this interview came was us initially me calling you and saying look i really appreciate your team um because I was ghost for a while. I mean, like I, there was a minute where I did not call or respond to anything. That, I mean, it was minor stuff that you guys were saying, hey, look, we might need this or that. Or I might send something like, you know, a Walmart delivery or whatever, but you held it down. And uh, I appreciate that. I think where we are right now, like I'm right here now, like now that I've kind of kicked back in, like, all right, let me just wrap my head around it. I need to respond to all that stuff that you said. So like, um, you know, it's just, it's good to have somebody with boots on the ground that says, hey, look, you know, this isn't a hundred percent, but mm -hmm. maintenance, you could, this could go for some maintenance. Like I'm switching out the couch right now. The mm -hmm. couch is fine. It's still operational, but yeah. it's probably not the way you want it to look, Jason. So yeah. what do you want to do? And I could be a slum Lord and just say, eat it. You know what I mean? Like whatever. Or I could come in and go, all right, it, it is time. It's been a year. This, these cap, you know, these things have a life expectancy. Uh, to wrap it up. So uh, I'm changing out the, the couch and doing some other stuff in here today. So I feel like we've shifted into a point where I am not in the system anymore, in the business. So I get to tinker with it, which mm -hmm. I think a lot of business owners don't get to where they're so busy in the business, they never get to optimize it. So mm -hmm. Right now, today is an optimization day for me. And it would not be that if I, ha if I came in here and cleaned for three hours, I definitely would not want to deal with <laughs> <laughs> I know. nothing i'm about to deal with let's say that <laughs> yeah for sure now i mean everything isn't always peaches and cream let's right. not front let's not you know being in right. the hospitality space is going to be ups is going to be downs sometimes shit will hit the fan um yeah. talk about the situations that we've encountered and you know how we responded especially given that you know you call us a team you know right what's been that response yeah um, well, I would say that you guys mess up all the time. No, I'm just joking. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. No, I would say that you guys do not mess up much. And that, that is, I mean it when I say like, I, 
I'm, I'm doing this my whole life. Like if, if you are if like, man, the people around me are messing up. You are probably playing with amateurs. Like you, if you can afford playing with some pros, play with some pros. And so pros don't make a ton of mistakes. We make some, but we don't make a lot. You know what I mean? I feel like I'm a pro with, you know, STEM education, for example, like, right. and I don't make a ton of mistakes, but I do. Then I have to have, you know, I have to have a few things. I have to have some humility and I have to, you know, come with some level of empathy where I'm like, look, I'm a human. I apologize for whatever that, how that went left or whatever happened is what ways can I fix it? And I can only think of like one or two things in the course of a year where like something went off. I think that one time, like a, a door was left unlocked. But my house has security doors. So the house was still secure. It was just an interior door, mm -hmm. uh, the next exterior door, I believe it was. One up. One, uh, house was still secure, but the door was unlocked. And so if you have a guest come in, they're like, oh, I'm in Decatur and the doors are unlocked. I don't feel safe. That's that's a that's an error. You know what I mean? And I'm a I'm also a chemical engineer. And so engineers are like, all right, errors are errors are fine. All, all errors do is let you see what you need to optimize. I remember I was having a conversation about a standard operating procedure and a checklist. And I think you guys have um, optimized your checklist. You know what I mean? And I think sometimes each place needs its own little bit of checklist because if you have locked the doors and my house has four doors and the other house has two, like that right. might be with a, you know, a, a specific checklist. But um, I would say, not, so that's just one example, but there's not many examples at all. I would say the biggest thing is that you addressed it quickly um, mm -hmm. and have to go, you answers your phone. I don't have to go chasing you down. Um, I think you've even offered money, like you know, you uh, you know, you offered because money talks, by the way. Especially this again, hospitality tip, pro tip, by the way. Uh, money changes the game. Like if, if it's a five hundred dollar reservation and something goes not to spec, um, you, I can't tell you how far you can go with just a little bit of money refunded back and a very sincere apology. Mm -hmm. And the guests would be like, look, you know, this house is cleaner than my house and nobody's perfect. And then you still get a five out of five. We still got a five. And that thing that you, that we're talking about that door, she still gave us a five. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, anyway, I would say that that's the biggest thing is like um Conflict resolution and problem resolution, I guess we would say, is has been very helpful. An easiest way to solve a problem, it sounds like G.I. Joe is, uh, you know, not G.I. Joe. It's a G.I. Joe. So one of them is like uh, showing up is half the battle. Um, and that that's a big thing there, especially with the service industry. So I've never had to look for you uh, or your team. Um, and you were you were right there in the spot. I think there was something else. I can't remember what it was, but I know that you came in the house at 10 p.m. and fixed something, which I was impressed that you came back to the house um, at 10 p.m. and and adjusted something that was just little, but that meant a lot to me because I was at home and I was not here. So that's that's a that's that's what we pay for. If you're paying for a service and you're like, look, can I just get somebody on the team to get over there and fix this? And you were like, I got it. And somebody showed up at 10 p.m., which the guests loved. Sure. So now, you know, we, when we met, you you talked a lot about a team. And I would say you were one of the first hosts that really looked at it. I'm building out my team. Yep. You were saying you were talking about Magic and Jordan. We were saying is it like they got a team. They couldn't do it on their own. And you were like, right. that's what I mean. He said, I'm like, you said you were like Phil Knight. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Just talk about being a host and building your team why that's important versus you being a host and doing everything yourself or having to find new people every single time a problem arises. Like why have the team versus just being more reactive with things? Um, uh, It's just, it's better for your life. Uh, honestly, like it's, we could talk about team and solo on the host side It'd be the exact same conversation with being, you know, having a business and being mm -hmm. a, a solopreneur. Um, it is, it's the same. It's, it's, you know, it's like having, you know, it, it's, it's not being responsible for all of it. Um, 
And it's not like not being responsible for all of it because you can't, because you could, you could get out there and play ball, but it'd be better for you if you had somebody else out there with you. And so um, very early on, and this is, again, this is where I think that folks should try it by themselves. Go ahead, try it out. Mm -hmm. You be everything. I mean, for real, be everything. I mean, all of it, your property manager, you're your cleaner, cut your grass, everything, do it all. And, and, and tell me, and, and if you love it, then you're in the right spot. But if you don't love it, again, that's the if. There's some people who love it. They're going to, they would say, yo, this, I disagree 100% with Jason because this is, this is exactly what I want to do. Well, then this is, we're not talking to you then. <laughs> like, we, we're talking about someone who's like, look, I like this part of it, but I don't like these parts of it. If you don't like those parts of it, and you can, by the way, and you can, um, put together the team to put that stuff forward and probably put together the team of the worst part, the part that hurts the most. And mine was cleaning. You know what I mean? I don't have a problem. I respond to, I don't have a property manager. Like right now you and I are kind of like a property management team just because you see stuff that I don't see in you and Victoria will tell me about stuff. But um, I, I can't say enough about putting together a team to do stuff that you don't want to do. Another piece on this, by the way, it's like, would you rather, it's like, it is like having a small plate of food and you get to eat all of it. Like, congratulations. Yes, you have, you know, your your reservation was 250 bucks of which you get your cut and you get to eat all of it. And you got four reservations this month mm -hmm. because that's all you can do because you have to put gap days in because you can clean only on the days that you're off. Right. As opposed to a guy like me who maxes the calendar. There's no way where I can clean between 11 o'clock and four o'clock on a Wednesday. Like I'm at work. Mm -hmm. And so now instead of me holding, you know, four or five little, you know, small reservations, I'd rather book the month out for four or $5,000 mm -hmm. and I'll take a cut of that. Let me take sure. a cut of 4,500 bucks and then, you know, pay your team well, but they feel good about their 20 cleanings. You know what I mean? And and then realistically, all that time that I bought, I'm at my home, you know, with a six month old or whatever it is. You know what I mean? Like I'm doing something else. And that that that's the biggest thing. It it buys you some freedom. Um, if you want to be free or if you love doing it, then do it by yourself. But if you want some freedom, you you gotta put together a squad. And a squad is not five, six, seven, eight people, like three people, two. There's some people that just need an assistant. Like right. you, you just need one person <laughs> mm -hmm. and that would change the game. So I don't know. Teamwork is uh, my whole brain is at team right now. I, I rarely think about anything by myself nowadays. Mm. That's good. Being selfless. Yep. That's important and getting to the next level. Yep. All right, Mr. Jason. Um, you know, we're winding down now. Um, I know you've been pretty busy so far. Do you have any plans in the future um, any any perspective on the Airbnb space for any host that's um, listen to this, anything they should look out for or something you're you're planning on doing that you want to share? Yeah. Yeah, I would say, you know, my, you know, in my lifestyle, I don't need, you know, 60 doors. I think mm -hmm. at one point I thought I was going to have 60 doors until I got four. And then I'm just like, all right, this is enough. So I think that uh, especially with Refreshco, I need to expand, you know, some of I, I I think there's room for some level of expansion, um, but I would say to that's me personally. So to answer your question personally, I, I there is an opportunity to expand. I have one place that is a long term rental that you guys don't do yet, but I believe that's going to shorten up soon, and so I might ship some of those over. But um, the short term rental game is still alive and well. I think there's a lot of people who are complaining think that a lot of the fakery is getting kicked out because they can't keep their status. And a lot of these platforms do not play around. And like a 4.8 is hard to keep up. Honestly, it does not take, it's like if you're taking a test, you get one zero really like, you know, it really can throw off your numbers. And so I think that if you're interested in this game, I'd say go for it. It's a great opportunity for you to get some, you know, if you have the ability to do it, you can, you can actually be living in one and still be, you know, on the days that you're not using it, you could be making some income. So the great way to make some income um, 
it's a great way for you to test out whether or not you want to go into entrepreneurship too. Because um, if this is, if, if you want to use this as a microcosm of another business, like a bigger business, try it out. Like literally see how you respond to clients or customers, see how you keep track of your income, um, see how you manage conflicts um, and then see how you take care of a team, see whether or not, you know, does your personality, can you manage? And if you can't manage, could you put somebody on who is a manager, which is a whole nother level of like, can you hire someone to manage you? Mm -hmm. Just like another level, but uh, I take it into it. I, I'm always, I, I, I tell anyone, if you're interested in it, it is not dead. Oak Bay Airbnb is dead. It ain't dead. Mm. I'll give you one other quick tip. And this is something that I need to learn on. If you do it, and you do the moving around and the price strategies like I do, and you live in a city like Atlanta or Detroit or I don't know, any city that has like a sports team or has some type of uh, event scene, you got to watch it. Like I have, I have, I have seen some dates that are coming up in the future that I definitely underpriced because I forgot that um, a oh. huge soccer game was happening downtown or, you know, I, I didn't know that. The PGA attorney was like, so there's a lot of ways that you can move the price of your place from like $150 to $600 in one evening by just, or, you know, for two or three days, you know, we got, we got the world cup coming up. So, you know, this is going to be, I think we have four, three or four games. That's like having three or four Super Bowls. And if you don't pay attention to it, you mm -hmm. have your place super underpriced. Um, so that's another just tip, but no, I, I'm excited with it. I like it. I would not, I'll say this and I'll end I would not like it if I did not have a, a cleaning team that I trusted. I honestly would, I would hate it today, truth, because it would, it would be, it would not fit into my world. So the reason why I like it is because I don't do everything. And um, I would strongly suggest pick, find a team quickly. Mm. All right, Mr. Jason, this was good. I appreciate you for jumping on. I think you no for problem. sure dropped some really like good nuggets as far as the unit. I got a page full of notes, but I'm going to let you go. Enjoy the rest of your day. I yep. appreciate you. No and problem. Thank you. Thanks for jumping on. No problem. Tell the team I said, hey. I will. All right. Hey, you. If you are a host and you would love to learn more about how we can help you with your unit, taking on your cleaning, your laundry, and making sure you keep those five stars, then there's going to be a link down below that you can fill out so we can hit you up and send you over some information. And if you stay all the way until the end, please like, leave us a comment, let us know your thoughts, and then subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much. Peace.